Our next guest is the author, collaborator, curator of this beautiful book, and it is Brad Kalogny. Welcome to the show. How are you? Donna, thank you so much for uh, having me on. I appreciate it. So this is called Seeking Sanctuary. Uh, it is 125 years of synagogues on Long Island. That's right. Brad, what inspired you to do this? When you were a little boy and you went to synagogue, all of a sudden you said, someday I'm going to grow up and I'm going to document this. Well, I've been taking pictures of synagogues for about 30 years. Okay. And in 2015, uh, the synagogue that I belong to, Midway Jewish Center in Syosset, New York, uh, was doing a synagogue renovation. And it just occurred to me that a lot is lost when you renovate a sacred space. Um, the night before the renovation took place, the night before the demolition, I went into the synagogue and I took a lot of pictures because I wanted to have memories. And I remember reflecting that evening and thinking to myself about all that's lost when you do a renovation Obviously, it's for good reasons, but there's a lot of history. And, you know, I started thinking about not just the history of my own synagogue, but the history of synagogues locally and all across Long Island and, and how they've changed. Okay. Now, you know, it's interesting to me because I, I shared with you that I had grown up um, Christian, Roman Catholic, and I didn't really know anybody that was Jewish until I was 22 years old. My first friend, wow. Adrian Levin, you know, some friends, they, like when I, became, you know, did uh, some work, um, and then I moved to Long Island. And it's like everybody on Long Island is like 50-50, half of this, they're all <laughs> blended in, there's something, right? I was fascinated by the similarities of the culture between Christians and people of the Jewish faith. So I was excited uh, to hear about this history and how you put this together. One of the things I was so surprised about is the scrolls and the Torah, right? So when a synagogue is first built, you know, how, how does that first come to be? And when they did the renovations, were they able to keep the Torah? Were they, did they keep that? Or like, how does that all, pro, how is that processed? So I think what we can look at, at a, a period of significant growth on Long Island was after World War II. Okay. And not only did it grow uh, in population, but the Jewish population grew and it was significant. Um, in terms of building a synagogue, you know, groups start at a very humble beginning. And this is, I don't think, any different from a church or a mosque or any other religious institutions. Uh, you start small, you gain members, you gain financial resources to be able to uh, build a synagogue. And that just, you know, brings more people out and, uh, you know, has everybody uh, come out. Able to like celebrate your faith. That's right. So when the renovation happened, did they keep some of those pieces? and incorporate that into the renovation? Or was it a complete new redo? So in our particular case, it was a complete redo. Okay. The sanctuary uh, had been around for about 50 years and our congregation was growing. So we wanted to start fresh and it was a new configuration of, of the seating and uh, it, was, it was a fresh start for you know, the future. When you first made, um, and I know in our religion it's called sacraments. What is it called when you make your uh, bar mitzvah and for each yeah. of the different steps. Bar Same? mitzvah, you said it, yes. Okay. Bat mitzvah for a girl okay. at age 13. Okay, so when you were uh, young and coming up in your faith, um, what inspired you? Was it a special rabbi? Was it somebody that just kind of help, has helped you, mentor you along your journey? You know, my parents obviously were very instrumental in the Jewish upbringing that I have. And um, at a, at a, as a teenager, they sent me um, to Jewish camps as well as uh, summer programs. And in 1987, uh, I went to Poland and to Israel. And I took, that was really the first time that I took pictures of synagogues. And so now 30 plus years later, um, I've focused on Long Island, made this a very comprehensive volume um, of every synagogue past and present in Nassau and Suffolk County in New York. This is such a treasure. It's so wonderful uh, for people of all faiths to be able to have something like this because it's historical, you know, and important and significant. Yeah, and historical is, is the very important part for me because I don't think there's been a lot written about the history of uh, Judaism on Long Island. Uh, the truth is that Long Island is the fourth largest Jewish community in the United States. Wow. And there has not been a lot written about the history. Again, going back to World War II, a lot has been, a lot has taken place after that, but there wasn't a lot written before. 
So I wanted to go back to the very beginning, uh, the early 1700s with the first Jewish inhabitants on Long Island and make the book completely comprehensive of all synagogues past and present. Well, congratulations on this. I know that you're a big um, fan of sports as well. So That's are true. you going to do ballparks next? Or? <laughs> <laughs> well, we were just in St. Louis, your hometown. Yes, go, Got to go see Cardinals. Bush Stadium, which was yes. fantastic. Go Cardinals. Um, in fact, it's funny that you mentioned that. I'm just going to shout this out right now. My Aunt Connie, uh, Cornelia Sexauer just finished her first book, and it's about the three ballparks of the St. Louis Cardinals. Oh, I can't wait to introduce you to her. So thank you for this. This is absolutely wonderful, Brad. And we've been friends for a long time. You're one of my fr first friends when I started out at WLNY TV. <laughs> the station where the show still airs. I worked there as the promotions coordinator. Brad would come in um, and uh, greet me. Uh, a lot has changed, but one thing hasn't changed, and that has his heart. He's an amazing person. Stay tuned for more. Thank you for watching.